So you don't care about Yodobashi's top 10 camera sales. You just don't care about the Japanese market. Well, today I've got the top 10 sales or camera sales, mirrorless camera sales for North America. And they're coming from a top retailer and there's some pretty shocking surprises. Details coming up, but first, please do me a favor. Follow me on Twitter, subscribe, choose all notifications, like, comment, and all that good stuff. It's greatly appreciated because it really helps this channel grow. B&H Photo and Video has been around since 1973, three years before I was born. With over 400,000 products available for sale, they're one of the largest camera retailers in North America, and they just reported their top 10 cameras sold here in 2023. And there are several big surprises in this top 10. The first big surprise is we have a Kodak camera in the number 10 position. That's right, the Kodak FZ55. <laughs> Kodak camera. Now, I, I, thought, I didn't even realize Kodak was making cameras anymore, but we have them in a compact camera, the FZ55. In ninth place, we have another compact camera and the first of many Canon cameras in this top 10. And that's the PowerShot SX740HS. In eighth place, we have a Fuji camera, the first Fuji camera in the top 10. And it's also a compact camera. It's the X100V or V100X, X100V. Three cameras in the top 10, the bottom half or the bottom third of the top 10 is all compact cameras, point and shoot cameras. And that's gotta be a surprise for many of us as we've been talking about full frame cameras. And we constantly hear on this channel about why are we still producing APS-C cameras? We don't need APS-C cameras. Entry level full frame cameras are cheap enough that we can do away with APS-C and four thirds. Well, the market is telling us something completely different. Seventh, eighth, or eighth, ninth, and 10th place are all compact cameras. So clearly there is a demand for small and compact and definitely colorful. But that's it for affordable compact cameras. The rest of the top 10 is gonna be focused on mid to high end cameras. And in seventh place, we have Nikon's flagship mirrorless camera, the Nikon Z9, a camera that was announced back in October of 2021. And it has been selling very, very well. And I'm pretty sure, I bet you anything, dollars to donuts, I bet you a tea or a coffee on this one, that if Nikon didn't have problems sourcing parts, I would expect to see the Nikon Z9 a little bit higher up in this list and it would have done better in 2022, but still seventh place for a flagship camera that costs $5,500. I think that's pretty impressive and uh, well done Nikon. In sixth place, we have our second surprise. This camera was announced in late October, 2022, and with only four months of sales, it's done really well. Sony made great improvements to pixel shift. You're able to produce 240 megapixel images that are detailed, that are sharp. Even if the subject is moving across the screen, whether that subject be a car, whether it be animals or people, Sony's made great improvements here. They also added an AI chip, a dedicated AI chip to this camera. And the Sony a7R5 is the second Sony stills hybrid camera to be able to shoot 8K video. Coming in at fifth place, a camera that's been out in the market for, well, the better part of three years. That's a staggering amount of time. We're expecting a refresh of the Canon EOS R5, aptly call the Canon EOS R5 Mark II. This camera was announced back in July of 2020, but it created an awful lot of, well, market interest uh, and market interest is a polite way of saying this, going back to January the 27th when we first started getting leaked information about the camera. People just didn't believe that this camera was coming from Canon, a camera that could shoot 8K video, 30 frames per second raw, with IBIS, with autofocus, to be able to do all these other capabilities on a 45.7 megapixel camera, 20 frames per second. People just didn't believe that Canon could have potentially leapfrogged the competition. And they certainly did, but it did have some issues when it came out with overheating and boy, did it overheat. EOS HD just, well, they put it in a fridge. They put it in a very cold fridge in a freezer. And guess what? It doesn't matter how cold the freezer or the ambient temperature was, the camera would overheat after a couple of minutes. However, firmware 1.1, that improved. And then with firmware 1.6, the camera can now record unlimited 8K video raw at 30 frames per second or 4K HQ, which is 8K oversample 4K. The camera does a whole lot better and that's at 70, 80, and even 96 degrees in Texas heat. And that's around 35, 36 degrees Celsius. So after almost three years to show up in fifth place, well, that's pretty impressive. And it's our second Canon camera in the top 10, but it's not our last. In fourth place, we have the Canon EOS R7, 
announced back in May and performing well, despite being put on Canon's apology list of cameras they're having trouble meeting demand. Despite the apology for many different cameras such as the R6 Mark II, the R7, and the R10, Canon seems to be able to get an awful lot of cameras out the door to get them well into the top 10. So far, we have three Canon cameras in the top 10, but only one Sony and only one Nikon and one um, Kodak. <laughs> sorry, I can't stop laughing over that. I, I'm sorry, I'll be serious now. So we have three Canon cameras in the top 10, one Sony, one Nikon, and one Fuji at this point. So that's, you know, despite all this talk about Canon not having enough cameras to get out to the market, it looks like Canon is getting a lot of cameras out there. It, what it looks like, based on the sales figures we're seeing from Japan and here in North America, Canon is producing a lot of cameras, but they just can't meet the demand. The demand from the marketplace is significantly higher, higher than what they expected. In third place, we have our third shock of this video. Being announced in early November, the Fuji X-T5 takes third place and shows that Fuji is very much alive, doing well, and healthy here in North America with two cameras in the top 10. If you've been a regular viewer and subscriber of this channel for the past three years, you'll know that there's no surprise that the Sony a7 IV, since it was released or started shipping back in December, what was it, December of 20, 2021, it's been selling very, very well. The, the, the demand for this camera, just it's quite often to see it in the top 10 in North America, in Japan, if it's not in first place, it's usually in second or third, and quite often it performs very, very well. But here, in B&H's top 10 for 2023, the Sony a7 IV isn't in third. <laughs> third, third. The, the Sony a7 IV isn't in first place. It dominates second place. Well, it doesn't really dominate second place. It's in second place. So kudos to Tony. Tony. Oh my goodness, I can't speak. Kudos to Sony. They have two cameras in the top 10, but we have three cameras from Canon. So what is that mythical camera? What camera do we have in first place? Can you guess? No, it's not the R5. We've already put that in position five, I think it was. What was that? Position five for the R5? Uh, yeah, it was in position five. And no, it's not the R6. That's been out for a while. It's not even on our top 10. No, it's not the R8 either. That's a good guess. It's not the R8. Yes, you guessed it right. It is the Canon EOS R6 Mark II, a camera that was announced back on November the 1st or 2nd, depending on where you are in the world. Canon EOS R6 Mark II in the number one spot for B&H here in North America for the last two months. That is significant. Now this camera, Canon was initially producing around 23,000 units a month, and it's one of those cameras on Canon's apology list. Yep, right there with a bunch of lenses. And at the time when I brought you this information about this apology list, I asked myself, well, we don't have enough data here. Did Canon just not predict, did they make a mistake, not predict enough units? Or did they truly underestimate the demand of this camera? Well, from what we can see right now, being the number one spot, the Canon EOS R6 Mark II, uh, they are producing an awful lot of units. They're getting them out to the marketplace because all these numbers are based on sales. It's in first place. So what looks to be the case here is what Canon is telling us is that there was a huge amount of demand, more, far more than they expected, and it surprised everybody. We've got four Canon cameras in the top 10 at B&H here in North America for the first two months of 2023. We only have was it one, two, or two Sony cameras? Let me just take a look. I think it's two Sony cameras. Yeah, two Sony cameras, a Nikon camera, two Fuji cameras, and a Kodak. I was expecting Sony to dominate a little bit more, but clearly Sony isn't dominating. Canon is, and while four cameras is only 40% of the top 10, they're taking that number one spot. They've got the R5, they've got the R7. Canon's doing very, very well here in the top 10, and they do have a compact camera in the top 10 as well. So what do you think of these numbers? You did ask me for North American camera sales, and I provided that to you. B&H, while a US-based company, does ship into many other countries, as well as the United States. But when it comes to cameras, quite often you're going to see some sort of an import restriction. So these are all cameras that are being sold into the United States, even though B&H does service the world. What do you think of these results? Do you think that Canon's demise was, well, too early predicted? Because it looks like, from the sales figures we're seeing out of Japan and here in North America, that Canon is having trouble meeting the demand for their new cameras, the R6 Mark II, the R8, the R50, and even still, <laughs> uh, some almost three years after it was announced, they're having trouble getting enough camera or Canon EOS R5 cameras out there as well. 
I don't think we're going to see Canon's demise. They have about 50% market share, and they've shown with the Canon EOS R8 and the R50 that they're able to finally produce cameras. Take a deep breath here and just sit back and think about this, ponder this, that aren't severely crippled. They're not offering us 1.6 or 1.7 times crop anymore. They're not offering us motion JPEG. They're not offering us stills rates that are, okay, well, six frames per second in that electronic first curtain shutter on the R8, but then around 40 frames per second electronic. But still, you know, the, the, these cameras are segmented well and no IBIS, I get it, a single card slot. But you see, then look at the Canon EOS R6 Mark II for $1,000 more. These cameras are segmented, but in their segment, they look pretty impressive. So I think that Canon is going to have a good 2023, but 2023 isn't over. I'm expecting to see one more camera from Canon, and that's the Canon EOS R5 Mark II. I'm also expecting to see some major announcements by Nikon, with the Nikon Z8, the Nikon Z6 Mark III, and of course, maybe some APS-C cameras. Of course, Sony, we've got three cameras that were recently registered. So what, the A9 Mark III? Definitely, an APS-C version of the Sony A7S III? Potentially, and some of you in my previous video said that doesn't make any sense. Well, does it make as much sense as, well, the FX30, which is an APS-C version of the FX3, which is a full frame cinema video centric version of the already video centric A7S III? Uh, looks like Sony is getting a lot of attention and in a marketplace where there's very few competitors. So even though they might have a see or it might seem like they have an awful lot of camera models competing in the same space, they're only competing with themselves. There's really nothing from Canon, certainly nothing from Nikon, and nothing from, well, Pentex and OM System, or even, what's that other company that I failed to mention? Anyhow, so let's just get past that. The point is, I think Canon is safe, but I wanna know what you think. I understand there's still an awful lot of frustration. I understand a lot of people have left Canon because they're sick and tired. They were waiting for lenses like the Sigma, 150 to 600. There are certain lenses, affordable lenses, certainly in that mid price point, they were looking to see. And when Canon enforced or came out with that, well, it wasn't so much that Canon announced something, the information leaked out, which I got here first on this channel, showing that Canon is enforcing their intellectual property. And then nobody, nobody, unless Canon grants their permission, can produce third party lenses for the RF mount that have autofocus. That certainly didn't go over well. And even though it doesn't really affect me, mostly buying L series glass, I'm still disappointed because, well, you see, even though I might not buy a lot of the entry level or mid level glass, it affects the pricing without competition in this space. We're going to pay the price that Canon sets. And yes, I know what you're thinking. Canon's got an awful lot of cameras on sale and lenses on sale. And since Black Friday, They've discounted many lenses by two to $400, dropping the price of the 800 millimeter that used to sit here back to its original release price. And I think that's impressive. The R5 is $400 off, the R3 $400 off, and the R5C also $400 off. So it, it's strange because in the, in the marketplace where we buy and purchase camera gear and camera equipment, it seems like prices are stuck back in 2020, despite inflation being at record levels. And yes, I know if you live in Europe or in the United Kingdom or other parts of the world where your currency has depreciated against the US dollar because the prices for cameras are pegged in US dollars, then yes, you have seen a subtle price increase or a large price increase depending on your currency. And of course, you live in Japan where these cameras are made and sold. You've seen a staggering huge increase of over 30% in the price of your cameras, lenses, gear, and accessories. But if you wanna stay up to date on all the latest camera gear, news, and rumors, or even numers, Go ahead and subscribe and choose all notifications. But please, if you did like this video, go ahead and share it on, well, um, Facebook, uh, Instagram, all social media, Twitter, because by doing that, you're further engaging, you're helping promote this channel, and it really does help the channel grow. And also, don't forget to choose all notifications, but if you're not getting notified, check your spam filter, check your junk folder, because quite often, um, YouTube sends out a lot of these, it, uh, videos, emails every day for people who are choosing notifications, but sometimes they just get trapped in the spam or junk folder. But that's it for now. I want to say thank you very much for everybody watching, for tuning in and engaging. Uh, I really do appreciate the time you take to watch my videos. But that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching. Have yourself a great week. The weekend's almost here. Enjoy. We'll see you again soon.